everybody welcome to the channel and today we're going to go over some geometry nodes and we're going to make an archway that'll be obviously in geometry nodes procedural you can do whatever you want with it texture it uh, randomize the size and location the handles will all be available and i'll show you all of that in just a minute but before i do this little procedural uh, splatter pattern i'm working on which is fully animated and I'll just switch over to the shader editor so we can get a little bit of look at the notes here and go over to cycles because this is a hundred percent based on cycles so actually what we can do is we just control everything from the one node which is ideal so we kind of mess around with the scale a little bit and you can move the location and effectively layer paint you can move this on the Z you can change the coordinates as you wish there's some slight variations it's helpful and then you can bring in and out of the noise layers and then this uh, the other values kind of tweak it anyways it's just something i'm working on but the cool part is that this particular texture setup is animated so if i hit play and zoom in and then of course change the scale a little bit we can make this look like fire, lightning, all kinds of different things. And this can just be thrown on anything you want. And then you can make all the adjustments. And I'll put that up on the Gumroad. And if you make the right adjustments, you can make it look like lightning or fire. And of course, you could come in and you could just change all the different color values and shift them around. So it's customizable. It's one of those things you just kind of tweak and play around with. But like I said, it'll be on the gum road. So let's get started. All right. So we'll keep this one as short as possible. I've just got a basic cube and I'm in the geometry nodes editor workspace. Uh, I kind of created for myself. I do like this left or right thing. I'm just trying to get used to this. This seems a little bit more efficient. And I kind of want the right side of my screen open. I don't know. I was just right handed. I just like it. So click new on the geometry nodes and let's pull this over. If you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can control right click slash and remove that. And now what we want to do is we want to add in a curve. And we'll go to curve primitives. And we'll add a Bezier segment. And if you go ahead and connect that. Now what I did to make it nice and simple is I just zeroed out the start for everything and the end handle. The only thing I didn't zero out would be the X axis for how big we want our arch to be. What you can do is start working on the start handle. And actually, let me just zero that back out. I can make this a little bit bigger and move that out. There we go. So now if I move this up on the Y on the start handle, I can kind of bring the arch size up and then maybe play around with this factor a little bit on the X because that's where we're at. All right, that looks pretty good. So that's the start handle. Now I'll go to the end handle and kind of mess around with the end handle a little bit. Just playing around with the Z there. So let's zero out the Z and go back into top view. Now I got this nice half crooked archway to work with because I don't want mine perfect. If you want yours perfect, you can continue to do that. Now we're going to put another node in and this one is going to be curve to points. And so now we've got all these big blobby points in here and we're going to have to fix that. So you do have a count here. So I would keep the count low just for now if you happen to have a slower PC that way when we do uh, turn this into mesh it does not crash your computer or lock it up which is terrible and this is not a bad point to just go ahead hit control s create a name and save your file all right so maybe you guessed it but we're going to turn this into volume so points to volume and just drop that in and now we've got this radius control we can work with which is going to help us out and now we want to do is go volume to mesh and drop that in. So now we've got a Bezier, Bezier and we have our mesh. And now if we were to increase the count, 
you're going to see our archway is kind of coming together, literally. And so you can kind of play around with the density factor. You can play around with the radius. Uh, we're going to randomize the radius. So what we could do right now is just pull this off the fields here and type in random. And we may tweak this a little bit later, but the start and the finish could be something like um, 0.7 and then one, or you could just go 0.5 to bring it down to 0.2, just to give it that extra randomness. And then you can play around with your density factor, the count. And if that's just a little too blobbish for you, you can just type in math and get a math node, set this to multiply, and that'll give you some more control as well. And this could be a nice output value so if we wanted to control our archway, then we can go ahead and have that ready. So if we were back in our main layout and we went to geometry nodes, we've got this value here we can kind of work with. So if you want to see it on a bigger screen or whatever's going on, then there you go. All right, so this is pretty cool, but let's make it a little bit nicer. So I don't really see a whole lot of control here. Um, a couple things you do, slow PC, you could click set shade smooth okay and that's pretty nice but I'll just mute that for now if you do happen to have a faster PC I think you'll appreciate this even more you can do is subdivide this and now with the subdivision on there what we can do is actually add an extrusion so I'll extrude it right after the mesh and I don't want to just leave it like that so let's pull this down to like 0.1 and these could easily just be rocks right this this looks like it could just be done but it's not enough control and we're in geometry nodes so there's really no reason not to do a little extra so for the offset we can plug in a noise texture into the offset and now we can actually bring up well you could bring up the amount or you could bring up the radius where'd my radius get to that's right we took that radius out to the other viewport so I kind of actually I kind of like the way that looks right now so you could control this and bring it down and kind of mess with it and now you could play around with the noise see if the roughness and distortion doesn't help a whole lot uh, what you could also do is go to 4d and in the 4d and this is just if you want to do some spooky sci-fi archway hashtag frame and then forward slash something like we'll try like 500 and now if I actually hit play on the timeline, I've got this like ooey gooey animated thing going on here. So it's a live archway. It could eat you. Uh, then you could change the, the time. I almost said scene time. That's something different. Maybe to a thousand and just slow it down. And you've got this kind of, <laughs> it's definitely alien-esque. Let's pause that for now because I don't need any aliens in my tutorial. All right. So... Now what we could do is we could throw in a set material. And so we can put some color on this thing. Now what do we want to do with it, right? Uh, we could come up to Blender Kit and just type in Rock and hit Enter. And then you've got all this stuff. Be careful though because some of it is procedural. You can deselect the procedural by going to Texture Based and sometimes that still doesn't help because it's still going to offset it. We could just drop any old texture on there and go over into Cycles. And what I will do is I will drop in a plane. Wow, that's a really big archway. I didn't even realize that. G and Z and kind of bring that down a touch. And why is my world that bright? Point two. Now I got something else going on. I'll bet 
I got some crazy light over here doing the most. Yeah, it's at a thousand watts. That's a little bit high. No big deal. Bring that down to like maybe 85 or so in the scene world for now, just to kind of get what we're doing. And I'll drop a texture on the plane. So let's just add a new texture real quick and kind of bring that down and create like a little contrast so we can see what's going on with this. Now I dropped in a texture, but it didn't take, right? So what I got to do, and it probably jumped into the container system that Blender has. So here it is. I just have to select it, and now I've got some kind of ooey gooey blob material. It'll probably work good with our animation. So I'll go to the texture node editor. I mean the shader editor, pardon me. And I'm going to go to the mapping. Let's look at this thing for a second. We're set to UV, and I don't have a UV on this. And you can do the, the new UV system in geometry nodes, but that's a little convoluted. So I'm just going to go to object to vector, which works pretty nice. Looks like that's kind of what I want. Now, I'm doing this for a tutorial on my Udemy as well. So let's go to the layout. Let's see, does this look good? Yeah, it looks okay in Eevee as well. So I could rotate this now. Probably 90 degrees on the X. G and Z to kind of bring it down. I'll bring this up. Bring the plane up and kind of encapsulate it into its own little studio. And then with Edge Select on, this is a cool thing you can do. I'll just select all and hit control B, bevel it, add some segments, come back out, and shade that smooth so it looks nice. Then you come down to this uh, auto smooth as well, and you can plug that in. So now we got like this little studio set up for our archway. Now let's bring some of the values out so we can play with it in the viewport. So what I'll do is I will bring out the multiply again, which is going to change the look a little bit. I will also bring out my offset. And I will bring this scale out. This one's really important. So let's grab the count and go back to the layout. So now I can lessen this and you've got this neat little archway and you can kind of play around. And I got this value in here, but I actually wanted a different scale. And I'm gonna just jump back over and I'm just going to absolutely clutter this thing up because I actually want all of these out. So what I do is just connect them and I'll drag the density over. I think the threshold and adaptivity, I'm just going to leave that alone. And the subdivision level, we can bring that over as well. So it's something we can bring to zero. All right, now I'm done. Now I've got 500 selections over here. So now you can play around with the start position and things like that. So if you put this into, like if you make this an asset and put it into a scene or append it in. Well, now you can move it around. Kind of make the rocks do a little dance again. Do whatever you want. Anyways, pretty cool, customizable archway. Uh, you can change everything. Kind of suit your needs. Bring the count down to just a few. Like something like that, where they're just starting to touch. And we still have the animation on there, so it's like these fluid rocks. And one more thing, just for the fun of it. I threw my splatter texture on this, and I just had to hit play. <laughs> now you've got this uh, warping material. It's procedural, and you've got the mesh actually warping and moving around as well. So I just figured that's kind of cool and show you some possibilities and things you can do to make your scene just a little bit more lively.
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy that and know that there are so many more things you can do with curves and I will be coming out with plenty more tutorials on that. Thank you for watching. Make sure to smash that subscribe, smash that like, and I will see you in the next tutorial.